The academic paradigm in regards to the chronological history of man, the claimed, continued, warts and all documented, completely linear journey to the modern day from a claimed birthplace upon the continent of Africa to the caves of Europe and Asia, becoming post-Ice Age neoliths, all somehow mysteriously capable of incredible feats, all mysteriously deciding to build similar structures in similar ways of similar size, with no explanation even attempted. All this claimed as having happened and fully known of without a single gap. An institutional castle built from nothing but sand. The Bering Strait is home to a theory of the same name, crucial to this evolutionary tale of human development. Yet what resulted from research done by a handful of highly capable individuals of integrity? It is a site which proves beyond doubt that the Bering Strait theory is nothing but a lie, one which those who profit from this current paradigm due to steel have been revealed spending great efforts in protecting it from the truth, a truth mutated into a perceived conspiracy. The Bering Strait was a frozen landmass, connecting continents, crucial in explaining primitive man's travel across them. A modern historical paradigm, not only explaining the migration of man to the rest of the world, but it must have been at a particular specific time in history to fit currently funded scholarly accepted opinion on the development of man. Virginia Steen McIntyre, however, found fossils, stone tools, and strata dating back 200,000 years earlier than academically accepted. She was told to either repeat the excavation and provide fitting dates, or her findings would be thrown out. She stood by her research and eventually lost her funding. However, it seems that Virginia had a knack for studying areas which are clearly, if historical teachings be inaccurate, highly controversial areas of archaeological interest, for she was seemingly a thorn in their sides with her other previous research and subsequent discoveries too, specifically those made at other sites such as Huyatlaco, an archaeological site in the Valsaquillo Basin near the city of Puebla, Mexico. After excavations in the 1960s, the site became notorious due to geochronologist analysis from the research done in conjunction with Steele and others also indeed indicated that human habitation at Huayatlaco dated to as far back as 250,000 years ago. Wikipedia states regarding these finds, quote, these controversial findings are orders of magnitude older than the scientific consensus for habitation of the New World, which generally traces widespread human migration to the New World to a maximum of 13,000 to 16,000 years ago." End quote. Although these two sites are a considerable distance from one another, they are crucial for the chronological storyline of modern claims regarding timelines of human migration slash habitation dates which they want to be perceived as far back within antiquity as being 13,000 years ago. However, this evidence proves that humans had already established these landmasses more than a quarter of a million years ago. Although Wikipedia predictably attempts retorts to these claims, to their credit, they have listed a vast array of incredibly talented, highly qualified specialists, along with their own testimonies and personal investigative conclusions supporting the work of Virginia Steele McIntyre. It's also to its credit that they note the harassment received by these pioneers who literally threw the rules out of the window in pursuit of the truth. Quote, Steen McIntyre claims that some of the original research team were harassed, viewed as incompetent, or saw their careers hampered due to their involvement in such a controversial and anomalous investigations." End quote. She would eventually lose access to funding, lambasted for her fines and claims never ceasing. Regardless of these attacks, we find Virginia and the many other courageous individuals commendable in their search for the truth and they are undoubtedly areas which they have debunked with artifacts and dates, evidence so passionately argued as lies, it is almost complementary to her ability. This controversy is to us undoubtedly highly compelling. The Crystal Skulls 
a set of the world's most alluring artifacts, possessing the power to create religions, snaring many a Hollywood figure with their mysticism and rumored possible alien origins. Firstly, how does one tell a real crystal skull from a fake? There are always artists capable of making and selling things that seem old, says anthropologist Jane McLaren Walsh of the Smithsonian Museum. And she should know, Walsh has seen her share of fakes. In fact, she's probably seen more crystal skulls than anyone else alive, subsequently becoming the leading academic on the subject. A stern skeptic with a ruthless ethic, only the most puzzling will convince Jane. Another major player in the skull game, according to Walsh, was Frederick Arthur Mitchell Hedges, an English stockbroker turned adventurer, who in 1943 began displaying a skull at dinner parties which he called the Skull of Doom. His daughter Anna later claimed that he had found the skull in a ruined temple in Belize during the early 1920s. However, this was later found to have been a lie. Investigations by the Linnean Society of London, a research institute specializing in taxonomy and natural history, revealed that Mitchell Hedges actually purchased his skull at auction at Sotheby's in London in 1943. How it came to be at the auction house, however, was never established. Which is unfortunate, because the Mitchell Hedges skull, according to Walsh's scrupulous examination, is the only one she has ever had to reluctantly confirm as an authentic crystal skull. What's more, it is the only academically accepted original known within the public archives. Smaller than other examples, which under microscope analysis were seen to have been made using rotary drills, the Mitchell Hedges skull is a more finely crafted, yet more crudely designed example that under the atomic microscope has shown signs of having indeed been an ancient pre-Columbian artifact, which sure enough was constructed using, quote, unknown technology. There are of course many examples of crystal skulls around the world and many more stories surrounding their mysterious construction elongated examples, stories of groups of these skulls initiating some form of energy field. Ancient laser cutting technology has also been claimed time and time again. However, we felt we would approach them from another angle to experience the rare occasion when modern, specifically funded academic institutes buckle to overwhelming evidence, proofs given by the defeated skeptic to those who pursue nothing but the perplexing truth and a direction for study. Made from a single piece of quartz crystal, Mitchell's Skull of Doom is unquestionably an exquisite example of an unknown history here upon our planet. Regardless of beliefs, or indeed the superstitions which now surround them, there are a rare few which support the theory of lost civilization and ancient visitation. This skull is much smaller than many and crudely carved leading museum scholars here to believe that in a world of fakes, this one is the real thing. The Great Pyramids, although undoubtedly one of the greatest ancient sites upon Earth, many feel that when these enigmatic structures are one day inevitably deciphered and their subsequent significance realized, this importance to the development of man will utterly eclipse that which has already been unraveled here upon our planet. It is a site that we predict will encounter numerous astonishing discoveries that will undoubtedly be played down or discredited by mainstream academia and media alike. Interestingly, however, regardless of our suspicions, an international research group's finds have seemingly been shared worldwide by the same organizations we so often find ourselves here upon our channel accusing of conspiracy. This research team apparently applied methods of theoretical physics to the site in an effort to investigate the electromagnetic response of the Great Pyramids to radio waves. In an exercise reminiscent of those which unraveled astonishing characteristics of the Bosnian pyramids has produced results that, predictably, since their discovery, scientists have stated were supposedly predicted under certain resonance conditions. They now state that the pyramid was predicted to concentrate electromagnetic energy in its internal chambers and under the base. This supposed initial prediction was made 
regardless of the fact that not a single claim to these events had ever been made within a single thesis funded by academia. Conveniently, this research group plans to use the theoretical results to design nanoparticles capable of reproducing similar effects in the optical range. Such nanoparticles may be used to develop sensors and highly efficient solar cells. The study was published in the Journal of Applied Physics. It seems to us that those in control of the production lines of mankind are seemingly aware of the technological prowess of the Great Pyramids, yet appear to be suppressing such discoveries in favor of financial control. In other words, the people who have permitted the release of these finds are the same people controlling the flow of information and technological development of our species. Quote, the Egyptian pyramids have always attracted great attention. We as scientists were interested in them as well, so we decided to look at the Great Pyramid as a particle dissipator of radio waves resonantly. Due to the lack of information about the physical properties of the pyramid, we had to use some assumptions. For example, we assume that there are no unknown cavities inside, and the building material had the properties of an ordinary limestone evenly distributed in and out of the pyramid. With these assumptions made, we obtained interesting results that can find important practical applications, says Dr. S. C. Andre Evluchin, scientific supervisor and coordinator of the research. We feel the research is dubious, not only due to the fact that it has been shared within the same mainstream media, who we feel have for a long time been funded to tell an entirely different story but also due to the attempted conviction that there are no chambers left to be uncovered within the pyramid. Is there something within the pyramid that, no matter how hard certain powers try, they cannot seem to hide? Is this the reason for this conclusion and subsequent research being so widely covered? We find the discovery and subsequent coverage to be highly suspicious.